All right, welcome back to Technique Wild. And say hi to Chris Moore. There's the man. All right, my name is Doug Lodge with the Barbell Swag Podcast. We are doing video number three today of the squat series. We did video number one on a big overview video of air squats, goblet squats, and just teaching the basics of squatting, which basically means heels on the ground, tight back, knees out. And then video number two, we did front squats. And then, like I said, today is video number three. We're going over back squats. You need some camera time. Uh, you're done. All right, so like I said, today we're going over back squats. Uh, all, the basic, all the basics, excuse me, were covered in the overview video, uh, but we're going to run through those really quick right now. So uh, if you're a CrossFitter or you're a weightlifter, for the most part, you're going to be doing a high bar back squat. And so those three basics look like this. Basic number one was keep my heels on the ground. So if I do a high bar back squat, my heels stay down the whole time. Okay. And then also, um, one of those points was keeping a neutral spine. You can see that I don't hyperextend. My back stays nice and straight, straight at the bottom, and I'm not round at the bottom like this. I'm not butt winking and then getting my posture back. Nice straight back the whole time, just like that. Uh, and then finally, point number three of the basics was that I always want to have my knees out over my toes. So my knees are gonna be out right over my feet, up like this, and I never want to let them dive towards each other like that. I don't want to get that, that funny knee wobbling while I'm squatting. Okay? Uh, so those are the basics. No matter what type of squatting you're doing, neutral spine, heels down, keeping your knees out over your toes. Uh, for today, we're going to cover two different variations of squatting. Uh, there are many different variations of squatting, but today we're going to focus on kind of the big two. Uh, the big two, for now, we're going to say uh, are high bar squats and low bar back squats. So if you come in a little closer and you look at where I'm gonna put my grip, there's a knurling, and then there's also little hash marks, and that basically tells you if you're centered on the bar. So what I typically do is I go about a thumb's length outside of that smooth part, or maybe I go an inch or so inside of the hash mark, depending on what I'm doing exactly. Uh, so I'll, I'll start here for the moment, and then now I know I'm centered because I'm equal distance from these little hash marks. Then I'm gonna step under with both feet, and I'm gonna put the bar right in the middle of my upper traps. Okay? This is a high bar position, I'm gonna stand all the way up, I'm gonna take one step back, and I basically don't need to step back any further than that, okay? So from here, all the same rules apply. I'm gonna look straight ahead, I'm gonna have a nice braced, tight uh, core where I'm not loose and hyperextending, and I'm not rounding over at all, okay? Butt back a little bit, and then I'm just gonna sink down, butt back a little bit, I'm gonna sink down right in between my feet, and to come right back up. So I'm staying nice and tall. I'm sitting down as low as I can with my heels down, my knees wide, and good posture. And then I come right back up. Uh, for a high bar back squat, unless you have amazing leverage, which basically means that you have a nice, um, a nice long torso and short legs, short limbs, you're probably not gonna be able to stay perfectly vertical like this the whole time. You're gonna have to bend over a little bit, and then as you go down, your knees will probably come forward a little bit. You can see at the bottom, my knees are forward a little bit. They're not 100% vertical. But as I come back up, I drive through my heels. They come back more vertical than they were. And then once I get vertical or close to it, my hips come forward and I, and I complete the movement, squeeze my glutes together, and I stand nice and tall at the top. Okay. So butt back, keeping my shins vertical. As I pass parallel, my knees are starting to come forward. You know, I, I, if I have good technique, I can kind of bounce out of that bottom position. If I'm catching the, not back squatting, I wouldn't catch anything, but as a weightlifter, you're kind of getting used to riding that bounce a little bit. Okay, your knees are going to come forward and then come back to vertical. What I don't want to do is stay all the way vertical where my knees come forward like this, and I'm always, I'm always coming up like this with my knees way too far forward. That's excessive. That's excessive, and you don't need to do it. Um, we're not going to go too far into that right now. Just, just know that you need to bend over a little bit uh, and not stay 100% vertical. Okay. Um, the other variation that we're gonna look at is a low bar back squat, which has slightly different benefits than the high bar back squat. So usually I grab a little bit wider, although you don't necessarily have to, but usually it's easier if you do. And then instead of having it right here, I'm gonna bump it over the, the meat of my upper traps and it's gonna rest usually right below my upper traps and right between my kind of posterior delts. Okay, this isn't as low as you possibly could put it. Some people do go a little bit lower but for me, usually I put it about right here. Huh? Especially with Olympic bars, they'll roll off your back if it's too low. If 
from here, usually I like to widen my feet a little bit. I tend to low bar back squat right about here, butt back, knees wide, and then I can usually can only go down to about there. Okay, I'm right about parallel, maybe even slightly above. Any lower than that, and I start to round. So if I'm here, again, looking straight ahead, feet slightly wide, butt back, knees wide. I can only go to about here before I would have to compensate some way, whether I'm rounding my back or I'm pushing my knees forward or my heels are coming off the ground. In order to go lower than this, I would have to make some type of a, a compensation. I would have to compensate in some way and my form would break down. I'd be doing it incorrectly and I don't want to do that. So uh, I would stop before I go any lower uh, than you just saw. So low bar back squats for me, parallel is about all I can do. And so I don't try to go any lower. There's barely any benefit from going lower than that. And there's a huge risk, excuse me, huge risk because I'm much more likely to get injured once I start compensating. So uh, I tend not to do that. Uh, so one more quick point about low bar squatting is, uh, as I said before, since the bar is a little bit lower, that usually causes me to bend over a little bit more. So as opposed to a high bar squat where I'm very vertical with my torso, a low bar squat, I'm probably gonna bend over a lot more. And in, in this bent over position, I'm gonna get a lot more activation and recruitment of the muscle fibers behind me, which basically means my glutes, glutes, hamstrings. It's gonna be a much more hip dominant movement. So I can, I can kind of put the stress on my glutes and hamstrings and take it away from my quads a little bit. Granted, they'll all be doing some work, but I can, I can bring up my glute and hamstring strength by doing a wider stance, low bar, uh, type squat because it's more hip dominant than a weightlifting squat, which tends to be more quad dominant. Again, you can get strong everywhere doing all of them, but those little variations can help you um, get more hip strength. And then if you're doing a high bar squat, you can get more kind of knee extension, quad dominant type strength. Again, it depends on what you're looking for with the variation that you choose. Uh, a final point for knees out for both types of squats is one cue that tends to help people if I am a person that every time I go down, I go like this and my knees tend to cave in like that, I can think about pushing the floor apart, okay? So I'm here and I'm trying to push my feet away from each other and that tends to have my knees go out a little bit. That term knees out doesn't actually necessarily mean knees way out, but it does mean is that it's keeping your knees from diving in. So I'm trying to avoid this by pushing my knees out. It just gets me back to you know, relatively to normal. If you go a little bit beyond normal, there's totally nothing wrong with that, that's totally fine. Uh, as long as your knee is over your toe, you're not twisting your knee and you're much less likely to hurt your knee. So think about pushing your feet apart and that'll help recruit your glutes, glute medius, and all of your hip external rotators and it'll keep your knees out because if they're not firing, your knee's gonna dive in. If they do fire, they're just gonna pull your knee towards the outside. Uh, so one more reason to do hip dominant squats is to help strengthen those external rotators. It'll help push your knees out, even when you're doing the non-hip dominant variations of squatting, like the high bar back squat, which most people do when they're doing weightlifting and CrossFit. Well, that's it for video three of the squat series. Again, video one is the overview. Video two is the front squat. This is video three on the back squat. We'll have more squat videos, even though we haven't decided exactly what they're gonna be yet, coming up very soon. If you wanna see any more videos from us, uh, from Barbell Shrug or from Technique Wad, you can go to barbellshrug.com. All the videos will be in the library on the site. Just click the Episodes tab at the top of the page.